Shaba Barabosoto Sakaraba. Hello, everybody. Blessings to you. Today's uh, title is The Passion of the Prophet. Some say passion. And I, I love this because um, the passion of the Prophet. Uh, shut the, in fact, uh, the Latin word, of course, we know the word, the passion of the Christ, and we know that from the movies, the passion of the Christ. But really, the Latin word for passion means uh, eagerness, zeal, enthusiasm, jealousy, and rivalry. My gosh. It comes from the Greek word, uh, excuse me, the Latin word passion means to suffer, and to bear burdens and to endure it means patient suffering okay it means patience patient suffering uh and an example is the passion of the christ where he wore and bore a crown of thorns on his head he's known as jesus is known as the lord of patience with the crown of thorns on his head my gosh of course, the Bible says love is patient. That word patient is long-suffering. He's able, willing to endure long-suffering. So prophetic people are passionate. They bear burdens. They go through suffering. They endure pain. And I want to talk to you right now that you will not stay in the pain, but you will endure the pain. You will break out of the pain and you will have a healing remedy and a restoration for the pain. You will not stay in the pain of rejection, of, uh, of abandonment, of misunderstanding. You will not stay in the pain, in the grain, in the ground for long. But you will sprout, you will bear fruit, and your fruit will bring healing to what's in the ground. Amen. So, passion means to suffer. It means to bear burdens. It means to endure. And once again, if you do not have the Word of God, if you're really not in the Holy Spirit, mature in accountability, if you're not walking with the community, then you can be susceptible to premature death. You can be susceptible to to a spirit of death, Leviathan, div divination, leading you to error and to the dangers of moving through open different doors and witchcraft and Wicca. And you can move uh, prematurely in presumption and, and die. And we see that with Elijah, okay? We see that with the prophet Elijah, where the prophet Elijah, uh, you know, uh, you know, he wanted to kill himself. The spirit of suicide came upon the prophet Elijah. He was so depressed. He was so alone and lonely. And after his greatest battle, he went down low in depression and loneliness and felt like a victim. He wanted to kill himself. He even cried out to God and said, take my life. You know, take my life, Lord. And again, that type of emotionalism, roller coasterism. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Listen, I want to talk to you. We as prophetic people are meant to be the most whole. And that does not mean that there will not be difficult trying times. Jesus promises that there will be difficult times. In fact, he even says that a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. So being a prophet is not all about being a beautiful, majestic eagle, you know, where you're so beautiful and you know you're so like untouchable no no prophetic people go through hell and prophetic people are many times misunderstood rejected stamps uh trampeded on trampled on the ground he took the fall and thought of me above all so prophetic people are very much uh you know misunderstood and very much uh, go through trying things because prophets feel and experience things in the spirit more than most people. But we're not meant to be up and down roller coaster loony people like 
like we need meds, like we're bipolar and schizo, and and we need to take medication so that we could just kind of be, you know, leveled out. No, the Spirit of God will gird us with truth. The Holy Ghost will gird us with a spirit of self-control where we feel Him more than the intricacies of the world, where we are in the stillness of God much more than the chaos of being so overly sensitive and overly emotional and overly experiencing, just losing our minds by the things of the world. But we are in the stillness of God. So we're not going up and down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Where are you now? Oh, he's back in the cave. Where is he now? Oh, we, we he's nowhere to be found. He burned every single bridge. We don't know where the heck he is. Oh, he's immature. Oh, shaka da da da. Like, you know, where the heck did he go? He's MIA, missing in action again. Listen, I've I, there's been so many prophets and prophetic friends in my life where they just go hiatus and they're MIA for a season. They block me on Facebook. They don't return, answer my calls, messages. It's like we're working on things together. We're communicating. All of a sudden, they're gone. It's like, what the heck? No communication, no clarity, just dropping the ball, just, just up and down, up and down, emotional. It's like, what's going on? We as prophets need to learn how to handle and steward our soul much better we need to learn to steward our soul carry ourselves and i declare right now god has increased your capacity okay god is stretching and increasing your capacity stop running away to run and hide and retreating stop hiding okay but you will be fully confident as a son being vulnerable before the world, whether they take you, love you, praise you, or reject you, and make fun of you, and they ridicule you in public, but you will be fully confident in the Lord before and vulnerable before man and God, because you know where your help comes from. Does that make sense? And way too many prophetic people run and hide. They're, not only are they incognito, but they're just... You know, they're they're out of their mind. And I, I destroy the spirit of psychosis, the spirit of uh, schizo. I declare right now, just where you feel like you're losing your mind, I just destroy that lie. I destroy that spiritual power. I destroy that entity. I speak peace to your mind and your soul and your emotions. I speak peace now in the name of Jesus. Someone say amen. So we as prophetic people are very passionate people. We're very passionate. And uh, if you're Latina, if you're Borica, Boricua, if you are, uh, you know, from the Caribbean man, then, uh, you know, uh, very exuberant, very passionate people. You know, we're all passionate people. We are all passionate people. But how we express that passion is very different, you know. Um, but prophetic people are very passionate. And remember, passion in the Latin means to suffer, to bear burdens, and to endure. Like Jesus, our Savior, being crowned with the crown of thorns. Amen. Someone say, preach, Pastor Ben. Today I want to talk about the passion of the prophetic. Let's go to this passage here. John 2, 17. John 2, 17. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Give us some hearts and likes. Okay. Uh, I, I'm always encouraged by the likes. Okay. Not just by the viewership. I like seeing a good number of likes. Okay. And uh, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Thanks for all the feedback, comments, likes, hearts, and shares. Uh, let's go over to John 2.17. Jesus' disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. I'm telling you, this is going to be a good, good day today. This is going to be a wonderful part today for you. Zeal for your house will consume me. Meaning that word zeal means eagerness, enthusiasm, and jealousy and rivalry. Jealousy, rivalry. Prophetic people 
have a jealousy for the things of God. Prof prophets have a jealousy for the bride of Christ. They have a jealousy like, hey, you better back off, fool. This is my man. This is my woman. You better back off, fool. I'm about to cut you, fool. Prophetic people are like bulldogs, okay? They're, they're jealous. They, ha they have a rivalry. Any rival thing, enemy thing that's trying to compete with first love. Prophetic people have a jealousy for the things of God and are jealous and will deal with these types of things. So prophets have a zeal, a jealousy for the things of God and they will compete with anything that is below the standard of holiness. So Jesus says, Jesus' the disciples remembers the prophetic passage, zeal for your house consumes me, consumes me. Literally that word means I'm being eaten up from the inside out. Like I feel like I'm just burning with passionate, jealous fire. Like when a man finds out that his wife is sleeping and snooping around with somebody else that type of fire in the husband's eyes that wants to kill wants to murder wants to take that life okay and let me give you uh, uh let me give you a, a verse just so you know that i'm not just talking just so you know i'm not talking flesh okay there's a verse in proverbs that uh is uh, a biblical principle proverbs 6 34 for jealousy makes a man furious and he will not spare when he takes revenge let's read it uh in the new king james for jealousy is a husband's fury Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. The husband will not spare in the day of vengeance. Jealousy is the husband's fury. And that's how God feels about you. That's how God feels about you and I. How he feels about our eyes, our gaze, our heart, emotions. He does not want us to idolatrize any man, woman, person, man of God, woman of God. He does not want us to idolatrize or commit a spiritual adultery in our hearts. So prophetic people are constantly burning with this passion of like, man, I'm just holy justice, righteousness is burning in me. Like I just want to release fire on people and just condemn them and rebuke them. And I just want to slap that face up. I just want to like just you know just correct them with a harsh hammer and with a with a you know and shoot that's why so many people in a sense for years were hurt by the fire and brimstone type of preaching but you know John Wesley was a fiery zealous preacher Leonard Ravenhill okay uh, John Whitfield or right, some of these old classic revivalist reformers they were very heavy-handed they would preach holiness repentance the gospel of jesus and the fire of god and the fear of the lord and people will literally just start dropping dead getting slain just because the power and the fear of the lord would come down you know that's why so many people now today in 2020 they're very hurt by that type of strong heavy-handed preacher but we need the fear of the lord and we need holiness preachers we need true gospel preaching of repentance hell is real heaven is real and jesus is the judge that can either judge you into eternity or judge your wrongdoings as you have earned and deserved and committed unto yourself amen so the fear of the lord is making a comeback today <clears throat> so that word zeal means enthusiasm jealousy rivalry it means boiling from heat like you know when uh you know you're boiling water okay and then all of a sudden and it goes boiling from heat god has a boiling heat jealousy for you and prophets prophetic people have a boiling heat jealousy for the people of God, for the things of God. My gosh. 
And they will not stop until they see every Jezebel kicked out. <laughs> until they ever see every witch, every Jezebel kicked out. Listen, you need the pastors to, to cuddle and to pet you and to make you feel. We need the pastors to make you feel good. But you need the prophets to prophesy and deliver those devils out of it. I said, get out in the name of Jesus. Get out. You need prophets, prophetic people to draw the line in the sand and to say enough is enough. Choose this day whom you will serve. God, Yahweh, or Baal, Baal, Molech, Ashtaroth. Choose this day. Prophets draw a line in the sand. Okay? Many times pastors are like, oh, you know, we could be in the middle and we could be in the gray rather than the black and white. But prophets are like, no, nope, it's only this or that. Boom, boom. Listen. The reason why some of you are stuck in some lukewarm, swampy Christianity is because you're too busy being around pastors that always want to be in the middle, neutral ground. But sometimes you need a prophet to deliver you. You need a prophet to excel. You need a prophet to rebuke you, correct you, and to excel. You need a prophet to draw the line in the sand. Come on, somebody. And to say, this is not of God, and this is Jesus Christ. And that's the problem with most people right now. They're too busy being in churches and ministries where pastors are leading them. But the Bible says that the foundation is built upon the apostles and the prophets. Come on, somebody. Someone say amen. So, jealousy, zeal, all right? Um, prophetic prophetic people are many times very passionate, okay, very exuberant. And I just want to make this disclaimer right now. Many times, men, how males are are biologically made by God, men, okay, in our biological system, are many times much more apostolic as builders, mechanical structural builders all right it's in a biological makeup but woman in the female biological makeup okay as a species women are much more ear to the prophetic because women are much more emotional sensitive uh, are much more uh, creative and free and 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 they like to move and uh, you know they they again they're feelers so many times women are much more prophetic and sensitive to the prophetic things rather than men okay men we just like to do 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 women they like to move and flow and go on a journey with you and begin to curl hair and men are just like bam 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 let's do it bang 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 but so many times women are much more prophets than even men but because in christ are both male and female Men can also be prophets. And we see it all throughout the Bible, of course. Biblical history. And not only that, but women can also be much more apostolic. Which is wired more in the male uh, genetics. Okay? Does that make sense? Does, that's my disclaimer there. Okay, women can be ap apostles, in a sense. And men can also be prophets. But typically, women are much more sensitive and emotional and uh, feelers and you know uh, but that's why uh, that's why women also can be much more susceptible to manipulation and deception and can be wooed by their emotions and compassion and mercy uh, you know to Things that are not of God. So, prophetic people are very passionate. Okay, some say passionate. Okay, um, they're very passionate, and uh, many times prophets are relentless 
and they're determined like they have this inner inner grain on the inside of them okay they're fighters okay they're they're uh, they don't give up easily okay they, once they hear the word of God they stick to it they don't sell out okay they're not bribed okay prophetic people are very passionate and it's one way or the other and prophetic people are just very sharp and focused and keen and and prophetic people uh, you know they're relentless okay they're passionate people so many times prophets are very extreme some say extreme okay they they're extreme because they came from extreme backgrounds okay the devil okay wants to kill prophets and the devil is afraid of prophetic intercessors and prophetic deliverers all right that's why a lot of prophetic people go cuckoo for cocoa puffs they've gone crazy lots of prophetic people have fallen into the ways of the world because they don't know they have not been mentored in the prophetic they have not been groomed and they have not grown their soul to being a whole so their giftings are have taken over and so they're overwhelmed by what they see and feel and experience so now they have a hundred different voices rather than being able to tap into the one voice of jesus christ and most religious churches and christians and pastors don't know how to pastor and mentor prophets and prophetic people because they themselves are ill-equipped so most of the spiritually prophetically gifted people are many times rejected and pushed out of churches and ministries or they are condemned to being false prophets or condemned to death and condemned to being witches when they're not and most people are not accepted and they're rejected and so therefore they move out back into the world into sin they become psychics they begin to move in a new age or they kill themselves and they they binge on substances and they get stuck on addictions and substance abuse and they become vessels of the enemy they actually become powerful vessels of the enemy but then look at Miley Cyrus, look at Lindsay Lohan, look at Kanye West, look at 50 Cent, look at Brad Pitt, Shia LaBeouf, look at, uh, you know, Cardi B, look at, you know, all of these people had Catholic Christian foundation background. Even Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they claim to be Catholics, but they do nothing but lick cats and sniff cats. <clears throat> okay, but they claim to have a Catholic Christian foundation, but they're totally anti-Christ, anti-Bible, anti-anything of Jesus. Why? Because many times we did not groom them to steward and understand the spiritual realm. You could come to church and be a good Christian by doing good deeds, but we have not groomed them to be spiritual, spiritually powerful people. In the spirit does that make sense and I'm telling you today prophets are more powerful than psychics prophets are more powerful than witches I'm telling you right now in the name of Jesus seers are more powerful than fortune tellers shut up not because we are mature or active or activated in the giftings but because we have Jesus most witches Fortune tellers, they can read your mail even better than most prophetic people can, unfortunately. That just shows the ill ill equipping and the immaturity of the equipping of the saints. But because we have Jesus, we will always be greater and more powerful than any other witch, wiccan, wizard, warlock, uh, shatata, shaman, whatever. Amen. Because you have the anointing. Doesn't matter if you're anointed, because you have the anointing on your life. Some say you're preaching good, Pastor Ben. You're preaching good. So prophets are very passionate people, and many times they're very extreme. Okay, they're very extreme, and uh, you know, very, very, very extreme. Why? Because they come from extreme backgrounds. They come from extreme upbringings. Okay, I mean. You know, so so many, like Tupac, Led Zeppelin, uh, you know, Aerosmith. So, so many of these people, they came from extreme 
harsh backgrounds. And um, <clears throat> prophets uh, come from extreme backgrounds. Uh, you look at John the Baptist, Mark 1 to 4. Mark 1 verse 4. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> wilderness. John the Baptist was the last Old Covenant prophet before Jesus' New Covenant was fulfilled on the cross. And before there was a new era of New Covenant prophets in the church. All right? But John the Baptist lived in the wilderness. His ministry was in the wilderness. Some of the wilderness, okay? And some of you may feel like you're in a wilderness. You may feel like you're in a desert. Very extreme conditions. Very cold at night. Very hot in the day. Nothing lives. Anything that lives tries to kill you. Anything that lives, uh, you know, has literally survived the, uh, the torrential, uh, uh, you know, difficulties okay like so they're 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 the best of the best but anything in the wilderness tries to kill you okay and it's a very extreme climate condition not many people can live not many people can thrive but the bible says that you will have an oasis in the wilderness that he will cause streams of gladness living water to flow in the desert place amen but prophets are very extreme and many times their choice place of extremity their setting of extremity is the wilderness okay is the cave is hiding Whew. prophets many times love extreme conditions and they love to hide in their natural habitat they love to hide why because they're not accepted it's easier to be alone it's easier to not share. It's easier to not speak out. You know, years ago, uh, in America even, whenever people claimed to have a vision or a dream from God, they would be stoned to death and they would be burned at the stake as a witch many times. And this is in our history in the United States of America. Because the Bible says, I suffer not a witch to live. Um, but prophets and prophetic people are many times groomed out of extreme places. But I declare over you, you will not stay in the wilderness any longer. You will not stay in hiding any longer, okay? We go back and forth into the cave, the secret place, but it doesn't mean that we're retreating and hiding and separating ourselves. Listen, I believe in solitude, but that's very different from isolation you are not an island you are a body okay we need to be connected amen your life is too important for you to be isolated and become susceptible and open up doors for suicide and uh, false doctrines and demon spirits to infiltrate your life so prophets are very extreme but they're very jealous okay they're very extreme very passionate exuberant people they're willing to pay the price no matter what the cost they're obedient they'd rather go alone than go with people they they'd rather just get the job done you know and and they're many times misunderstood you remember jesus said a prophet is not without honor in his own hometown but I believe we're in the days where things are shifting because great is the reward of a prophet. If you are a prophet, and I'm going to talk about some of this more tomorrow, but if you are a prophet, the sufferings are great. Misunderstanding, rejection, loneliness, okay? Warfare, attacks, uh, you know, uh, abuse even of the church. Um, you know, uh, misunderstanding, blaming, Attacks of Jezebel. These types of things may be great, but great is your reward. Great is your reward. Someone say amen. And I believe we're in a season where, again, 2020, believe in his prophecy and you will prosper. I believe we're in a season right now where there is a distinction of true prophets 
and fake prophets. And right now, even in this season, God is raising up new breed emerging voices and prophetic voices in this generation. God's doing it. Why? Because some prophets have failed to address the current modern day issues, which means that they may have lost a place of authority in this season. So God has raised up new voices with authority and the right to speak properly into the issues of the day and to address it. Remember, prophets don't run from, they run towards. So prophets are very sensitive, emotional, they're filled with flavor, filled with personality. Okay, um, Look at the life of Jonah. You know, Jonah was always going back and forth. He was like, no, I don't want to die. No, I don't want to go to Nineveh. No. They're very jealous for the bride of Christ. Jealous for the presence of God. Very jealous for the things of God. Come on, somebody. Someone say amen. I want to give you five areas that prophets are very passionately protective over. Five things that prophetic people are very passionately protective about. Are you ready for this? Give me some hearts and likes if you are ready for this. Praise God. Five things that prophetic people are very passionately protective about. All right. Amen. Prophetic people are many times intuitive and uh, introvertive. Okay. Many times intuitive and introvertive. All right. Although their, their public office requires them to speak and to minister and to equip and edify. But prophetic people are many times intuitive very deep, as I shared yes the other day, mysterious, and prophetic people are many times very introverted, okay? So prophets, number one, are very passionately protective about their prayer life, okay? Their alone time with God. If a prophet does not have enough alone time with God, they're, they're really cranky and grumpy. They got an attitude, okay? And listen, grumpy prophets, please drink your coffee. Get your coffee. I know a lot of you prophetic people are up praying in the middle of the night at 3, 4, 5 a.m. And I know a lot of you prophetic people don't sleep because you're just like, you're a watchman in the middle of the night. And so you're always just up, to, you know, and, and I know. But like, you know, please don't be grumpy. You know, uh, maybe, maybe, you know, you're, you're dealing with spiritual power in the middle of the night with demons and angels and you're just like and you're just praying and fasting and you're intense and intercession i said i know but you know when you're around people like don't be grumpy get some coffee take a shower you know get fresh come on somebody all right uh but prophetic people are very protective of their prayer life and alone time okay it's essential Okay, your prayer life, your alone time with God, your study life, right? Your word life. So protect, prophetic people are very protective. Papa Bill, he is uh, my spiritual father. He is a true prophet of prophets. I love you, Papa Bill. We need you to come out to some of our meetings out here. You know, uh, Papa Bill really mentored me in uh, understanding a lot of the prophetic, actually. And uh, he really fathered me uh into the birthing mothers and revival history and uh, so i love you papa bill i'm always indebted to you and uh, i miss you and can't wait to see you um so prophetic people are very protective of their alone time their space okay their space it's like listen i love you but don't get too close to me can i trust you or not <sighs> You know, can I trust you or not? Like, you know, and so prophetic people are very protective of their inner life, their prayer life, their alone time, their uh, personal space, you know, so. All right, number two. The second thing prophetic people are very passionately protective over is, is atmospheres. Someone say atmospheres, okay? Is, an, uh, is a prophetic atmosphere. Prophetic people love atmospheres. Listen, I love atmospheres, all right? 
And I got this before I got connected with Pastor Benny Hinn. But I love atmospheres. Listen, if the at you could feel when there's strife or tension in the atmosphere, like it's not safe here. I need to bounce. Peace out. You're like, once you get in a church building or a meeting or you come to a, a cafe or you come to a restaurant, all of a sudden you're like, what's going on? What happened here? Uh, uh, and, and so, you know, prophetic people are so protective of their atmosphere. They don't want no mixture. They don't want no strife. They don't want no, no demons. They don't want none of that darkness like in the air, in the atmosphere. Pr prophetic people love to protect their atmosphere. They love atmospheres of worship. They love atmospheres of presence. They love atmospheres of power. Prophetic people, prophets love atmospheres of love. All right, many times prophets know when people are they cross their arms and they're like, prove it. And you know, when when there's contesting spirits, you know, that's why I love Pastor Benny. Pastor Benny teaches all the time that he only has intercessors in the front row. All right, nobody, no newcomers, no first visitors, no like whatever. Only intercessors who will help pray and break open the atmosphere will sit in the front row of the meetings. And so prophetic people are... You know, they feel when there's judgmental religious spirits. They feel, they know when there's somebody that is just staring at them for whatever reason, okay? And it makes them feel uncomfortable because prophetic people, you know, are very sensitive. And they, they, they like to be in places, atmospheres where God is the focus and also where they can actually be received and welcomed and they can be free to... Be themselves and just enjoy God and just be in the corporate atmosphere. But prophetic people are very protective of atmospheres, okay? They don't like it when they feel a judgmental spirit, when they when they feel a religious attitude, you know, when they feel somebody trying to test them or confront them in the spirit, you know, because prophets are fighters and we're going to deal with the Jezebel. We're going to deal with that thing, you know? So prophetic people are very passionately protective of the atmosphere. Okay, of the atmosphere. All right. Number three, the third thing that prophetic people are passionately protective over is the word of God. Listen, when a prophet knows that God has spoken a word to them, they are not going to let it go. Like, they are going to be like, this is is the word that God's given to me. I, I'm going to follow through that. I'm going to obey it with my life. I'm not going to give it up for, uh, for a Delilah. I'm not going to give it up for a man, a woman. Like, and when, when, a, when God reveals something to a prophetic person, they become really stubborn. They become so stinking stubborn where they're like, I'm guarding this word of my life. I'm guarding this word in my life. I don't care if you come with me or not. Peace out. I need to fulfill this word. Hashakarababa. I don't care if you come with me or not. Though they go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. And prophetic people are just so stinking stubborn where they're not going to give up their word. They're not going to, like, you know, they're fighters. They're going to, like, protect the words that God's given them. And they're going to protect with their life. Like, they're so stinking stubborn. People are like, you're not going to make it. And the prophet's like, and prophetic people are like, oh, the devil is a liar. You get behind me, Satan. All right, prophetic people are so stubborn and will fight for the prophetic words over their lives and their families to come to pass. Remember, prophets are extreme. They're zealous. They burn with jealousy. And prophetic people are just like, they're always boiling with heat from within with a passion to see the word of God honored, the word of God exalted, the word of God received, the word of God welcomed. That's why I've learned as a pastor and even as a traveling minister, that go where you are celebrated, not just tolerated. 
okay? That's why whenever we receive a man or woman of God to minister at our church, we want to welcome and honor them with so much honor and so much love that they they go, they leave with bags of plunder and abundance and love and honor that their life has changed and they're like, my gosh, my life was changed by being an open heavens world, Benlam Ministries. Because how we honor the grace on their lives. So it's amen. So prophetic people are passionately protective about the word that God has spoken to them. Sometimes even to their downfall. Honestly. All right, number four. The fourth thing that prophetic people are passionately protective over is the underdog. All right. I know this is going to relate to many of you. It's the underdog. Many times prophets have an inclining and inclination to speaking out for the underdog, for stepping up for the voiceless, the hopeless, the abused, the misused. Uh, prophetic people love to fight for the underdog. Why? Because many times they are an underdog themselves. So prophetic people love to defend, okay, love to fight for a cause of justice, and they love to fight for righteousness, okay, remember, prophetic people have a righteous grain where they love to be right, they think they're always right, prophets always think that they are right, okay, because they claim that God told them, they claim that God spoke to them, so therefore, prophetic people love to fight for the broken, the downtrodden. They love to, you know, uh, defend the orphans and the widows. Prophetic people many times love to help raise up the underdog, the offended. They love to, you know, just focus in acts and movements of justice. Prophetic people. Prophetic people are very protective of, you know, uh, the less fortunate. Um, you know, like some of the things that really make me mad is when, uh, you know, there's in a sense injustice against women. I I hate that. Okay, I hate that, and I I have a very low tolerance to women being a holes. Excuse me, to men being a holes to women. I have a very low tolerance for that. I have a very low tolerance. All right, to uh, abuse against women and children i hate that especially in the church it infuriates me okay it makes me mad because of my upbringing and because of the abuse and the brokenness of my parents and their marriage and the family that i've seen and so therefore my birth mother would always tell me ben you need to be a gentleman you need to be a protector of women so many times prophets, prophetic people, because they come from an extreme background, prophetic people will be overly extreme to give their life for the cause and the sake of speaking up for the least of these. Someone say amen. I'm telling you, for the least of these. So prophetic people many times have a strong justice anointing and they will speak up and speak out and they hate wickedness. They hate sin. All right. And the last part, the fifth thing that prophetic people are passionately protective over is holiness. Someone say holiness. Prophets are so protective over the spirit of holiness. Holiness and purity in the pulpits. They're passionately protective over holiness in the pulpits, holiness at the altars. Holiness in prayer lives, in personal lives, in secret lives. Prophetic people hate sin. They hate sin. They despise compromise. Yes, they, are, they need to be gracious. In fact, prophetic people need to be more merciful many times. We, we need to be more patient, more loving, more kind, more gentle, more gracious, more merciful. However, prophetic people hate sin. And they call out the BS. They call out the fake, the phony. They're not afraid to call out the false prophets, the false apostles. They're not afraid to draw the line in the sand and say, you're wrong. 
all right you are filled with horse dung okay you are filled with beetle juice okay so prophetic people are not afraid to you know just draw the line in the sand and to say the hard things however uh in midst of having such a zeal for holiness and the things of god and for purity and for the fear of god and hating sin we must love the sinner in midst of hating sin in midst of despising sinful deeds and compromise and and uh, monkiness and gray water areas where there's so much just uh, nonsense happening in the clergy and nonsense happening wickedness evil remember the sons of eli Hophni and Phineas, okay, they were struck dead at the altar because they were releasing strange fire and because they were committing adultery, uh, fornication at the altar of God. And so, prophetic people, we must not play with the things of God. We must uphold, adhere to the things of God. Keep things as holy. There's things that are holy and things that are unholy profane and unprofane that are uncommon and common things that are fully consecrated sanctified as a levy as a tribe of levite fully dedicated to god himself no other god no other name no other idol no other nations no other you cannot intermarry intermingle from other nations otherwise you may fall into their idolatry and ancestor worship so there's very fine lines but god is both the god of the old testament and and the new testament he's both the god of the old covenant and the new covenant he's the god of of you know uh the the law of moses and the law of grace of christ jesus so prophetic people are overly protective of purity they they're like stay away <clears throat> you know they they will overly warn men they're they will warn okay they will they will rebuke they will you know they'll have warning dreams okay they'll have corrective words they'll have rebuking because they love the church they love the bride they love the bride of christ they love the bride and their prof prophets and prophetic people are calling the church higher it's the passion it's it's the the zeal that consumes them they're 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 being tormented because they know that the church is called to a higher standard and so they're praying day and night night and day they are they have become prophetic messages themselves by the extreme life that they live remember john the baptist was known as an essene someone say essene e-s-s-e-n-e -S -S -E -E, because he lived in the caves there was a group of believers at the time they were known as the essenes okay many people called the essenes as an occultic group but the essenes were like the pilgrims they wanted a more pure form of judaism okay the essenes left the business uh judeo roman infiltrated worlds of judaism in jerusalem in israel and they left the city life and they became monks and nuns and they went into the wilderness to live a more simple fasted gospel oriented life where they said we want to be more serious and focused and separate ourselves from the worldly things we want to and the religious things and the the rabbinical and the, um uh you know uh what is that? Uh, shakana, do pharisaical and a sonisical. We want to separate ourselves from religion and we want the real thing and we're willing to be in the extremes of the wilderness to have an extreme visitation of the glory of God. Like the pilgrims did. Who am I talking to right now? Prophets, prophetic people will do whatever it takes to get a word from God. They will do whatever it takes to have a clear word, a true word, a pure word. They will do whatever it takes. They don't care about friends, okay? And, and that's where the un, 
unhealthiness and the errors of prophetic people can go into and be which is why I'm trying to help you and we're here to help you because I get it I understand okay listen prophets not everybody is your enemy okay prophetic people know this not everybody is your enemy and you do not always need to protect yourself and have your walls up okay prophetic people you don't always need to have your walls up i know we need to be wise we need to guard ourselves and we can't trust everybody of course but we do not need to always push people away stop pushing away the very thing that you need stop pushing away people that maybe god has brought into your life to help pastor you mentor you walk with you pray with you to help bounce some revelations off to be a sounding board so that you can share some revelations and dreams and visions and you can bounce it off in a safe place where you will not be judged you will not be condemned i'm not going to stone you and say you're wrong that's false okay no no but we can be in a safe place someone say safe place together where the heart of god and the father is present you don't always need to have your walls up you don't always need to be on. You don't always need to be, you know, ready to prophesy and to be the master prophet with the hour of the power word. You don't always, no. You don't need to have it all together. We understand that prophetic people many times get the best of them. That's why it's important for us to be whole. It's important for us to be mature in the midst of you know, being consumed with this passion, being consumed with this jealousy, where we have this this fight, this pursuit, there's this ingrained, innate nature of prophetic people to protect the altar of God, the word of God, to protect the bride of Christ, uh, the suffering. And, and we get suffer, we get thrown under the bus, we get misunderstood, we get called names, we, you know, we get rejected, we get kicked out of churches, we, you know, there, there's so many things like this that take place. But I want to tell you, prophetic people, the school of the Jedi Knights, you know, instead of calling my group mentorship, uh, uh, 7M Glory Co. I should have called it a School of the Jedi Knights. In fact, it's not too late. So, the School of the Jedi Knights. I should call it the School of the Jedi Knights, honestly. All right? Because the passion of the prophet can many times overtake you. Your passions can overtake you. Where you begin to do things in the flesh rather than really the spirit. I remember years ago, years ago, when the tsunamis were taking place in Japan, I remember, ooh, shababa. I remember how I was so consumed with just like this, this fear and this awakening. And I was just like, you know, I was bogged down by just fear and just, I wanted people to get it. And I remember I was being so consumed and I was just so broken, so sad, like, why aren't people getting it? We need to wake up. Come on, people are dying. Come on, we need to do better than this. And, and all of a sudden, one of my mentors at the time, she shared with me, said, Ben, you need to take your burdens to God in prayer. Because if you don't, then you might bash people with the Bible. You might try to manipulate. You may try to force people. You may say and do things that are not fully prog processed and fully digested that might actually hurt people and damage people and bear no fruit and do more damage and harm rather than really edify bless and help the war is in the heavenlies the war is in the spirit the war is in prayer not necessarily by flesh and blood but by spiritual realms our weapons of warfare are in the spirit so we as prophetic people, we need to learn to be girded by patience. Okay, even if it even if it's hard, we need to be patient. We need to be girded with the spirit, with the fruit of the spirit. We need to be girded with self-control. We ourselves need to be submitted. Okay. We need to be submitted to an apostolic prophetic council, mentors, people seek it, go after it. We ourselves as prophetic people, because we're so passionate, 
we can either become Sharia, Allah, Muslim bombers, where for the sake of righteousness, we're willing to blow up anything. We're willing to blow up like an explosive detonating bomb. We're just ticking, tick, tick, tick. We're a time. We're going crazy. Pastor Ben, I'm going crazy. I feel like I'm about to lose it. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Dude, I'm going crazy. Shut up, shut up. And just like many prophetic people, crazy, and they get put in the mental home. They get put. They get stuck on drugs and and big pharma, and they're losing their mind, and they're going cray, cray. But we as prophetic people, we need to be balanced. We need to be. We need word of God. We need mentors, accountability, community. And even as I shared yesterday and the last three days, you need to watch it. I'm telling you. But today I'm talking about the passion of the prophet. Because sometimes our passion can get the best of us. And we can become like self-detonating Muslim terrorists. In the name of righteous Allah, Allah Bar. Like, no. We as prophetic people, we need to learn to gird ourselves. Be patient. Have confirmation. Come on, somebody. We need to we need to be human at the same time and know how to function in earthly life and love and be kind. And not just be prophetic pit bulls where you know we just want to blow through every wall and we just want to blow up every wall of hindrance in the spirit realm you know no like like we we need to be you know there's a level of maturity for prophetic people someone say amen listen the passion of the prophet is atmospheres holiness the word of god uh you know is the things of god and uh i want to pray with all of you right now as we close today honestly this five-part series this series growing the prophetic uh every day i've been actually going much longer than i i'd like to but uh you know because statistics say that most people on youtube or on video will probably only watch maybe 10 15 minutes but uh I break that short retention span. I break that. But I want to pray with you right now because I know I know what it's like to be a, a young, growing, emerging prophetic person. I know. I know the burdens we have as prophets. Whether you're known in the mainstream. And I want to say this. Some of the most powerful prophets and apostles I've met in my life are not famous. They're famous in heaven, but not famous on the earth. Some of the most powerful prophetic apostles, prophets I've met in my life are the nameless and faceless. Are the ones that are in the rural neighborhoods of Kansas City. In, that have been plowing in Hawaii. That have been plowing in Washington State. Some of the most powerful apostles, prophets, prophetic voices are those that are not in the mainstream why because they don't need to be a part of the mainstream they just are obeying God and being faithful to what God's called them to do but I know the struggle I know the sufferings trust me I've gone through a lot of suffering good to see you Chantel I've gone through a lot of suffering in my uh, childhood uh, before I was born again, and even as a young minister, as a young man of God, I've gone through a great deal. But that's one of the joys of having the passion of Christ and a passion of a prophetic person, which means to suffer, which means to bear burdens. You love so much, that's why you suffer. You have a pat. You love so much, that's why. You're being burdened and you feel like you're being torn apart at times because you love so much. I want to pray for all of you here. Amen. Papa Bill, we're going to have to do uh, a Facebook Live together or something. I miss you dearly, sir. And uh, you're one of my favorites and I'm one of your greatest fans. <laughs> I want to pray for y'all. Praise God. Let me pray as we close this. And remember, tomorrow, 10 a.m. is the last part 
of this series, uh, the five-part series, Grow in the Prophetic, okay? Tomorrow, 10 a.m., I want to talk about the promotion of the prophet. Uh, I'm going to talk about a lot more about the office and the function of the prophets and the gift of prophecy. And I will prophesy over a number of you tomorrow, okay? And also, tomorrow at 5 p.m., someone say 5 p.m. PST. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. PST, I'm going live with Cat Kerr, okay? And remember, uh, next week, I will be in Florida. I invite you, Florida Glory Convergence. Join us. I know it's pinned right now. The Florida Glory Convergence is going to be myself, Katie Souza, Suzanne Han, and Candace Smitherman, and Cat Kerr. It's going to be powerful. In Jacksonville, Florida, join us in the glory next week in Florida, all right? Fly in, drive in, whatever you got to. I'm telling you, many people are coming for this. It's going to be awesome, all right? And in closing, I want to... Uh, encourage you and welcome you again subscribe to our youtube channel Benlam global follow me on instagram Benlam global and also uh if you want to grow deeper in uh this anointing you want to be part of that school of jedi knights i have a new group mentorship called the 7m glory equip okay the 7m glory equip i invite you uh, i welcome you and uh you know uh we just had our first Zoom call yesterday. I was very encouraged to see the wonderful faces of our students and mentees. But, you know, we want to journey with you to really get to know you, disciple you, mentor you, and to really effectively mentor you in the things of God. Amen. Listen, let me pray for you right now. Lord, I pray for our friends. I pray for every prophetic person. God knows your passion. He knows that you are passionate. He knows that uh, you have a zeal for the things of God. But I hear the Lord saying, is it worth it? <laughs> is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And I, I sense right now many of you as a prophet, prophetic person, who loves to pursue the glory you love pursuing the things of god you go after the cloud of glory and the pillar of fire you are the epitome you are a definition you are an epiphany of a god chaser like you go after god no matter what but many of you feel alone many of you feel alone many of you feel tired many of you feel depressed many of you feel sad you feel hurt many of you are alone many of you feel alone you don't feel appreciated you don't feel accepted you don't feel celebrated you don't feel loved you feel alone says god you're tired of of preaching and prophesying you're tired of releasing the word and it feels like nobody hears nobody sees it seems like you're just doing it to an empty crowd but I am your friend, says the Lord. I am your greatest friend. I am your greatest friend. I am your best friend. Your greatest reward, says the Lord. I am your all-time favorite. I am your all-time greatest fan and your cheerleader. Go ahead, says the Lord. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come away with me. Come away with me. Come away with me. I pray for every person watching right now that the grace of God will come over you that you would feel the strength of Jesus you would feel the encouraging the building up the edifica the edifying power the nurturing the nourishment of the power of God's word and anointing to hit you, to encourage you, to increase you, I pray today that you would feel the fire of God that burns. Shh. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. I declare over you, God is for you. He is with you and he's not against you. If he is for you, then who can't be against you? 
I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you right now in the name of Jesus. I declare over you right now that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And listen, I, I want to prophesy this over some of you right now. Some of you, if you receive it, God is increasing your prophetic stature. He's increasing your prophetic insight. He's increasing your prophetic ministry and your prophetic influence. He is increasing your prophetic vision. God is increasing your prophetic glory. He's increasing your intimacy with the spirit of prophecy. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. In the name of Jesus. Ben Lim, I saw Jesus anointed knots and tassels draped over you. Everything he bound and loosed in 20, 20 years of deep intercession flowing anointing through the canyons of his scars. <laughs> Dripping with his tears of scars and his eyes glistening his eyes. Sanctified soon. Amen, Papa Bill. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Wow. I receive it, Papa. Thank you. You know, Papa Bill and I, we had some good times in Kansas City and, and L.A. And thank you for being such a champion of my destiny and uh, my calling in this ministry, Papa. Thank you. <laughs> People of God, I want you to comment below. Comment below what spoke to you the most. What did you learn? Did you learn something? Did you receive something? Did, did something really edify you i want to hear back i love reading the feedback comment below what spoke to you amen what spoke to you what did you learn what did you receive thank you all for watching i love you proud of you okay i know you know uh, we made it this far in 2020 and as prophetic people you know we're many times kind of ostracized and pushed into a corner or, or we're used like a puppet prophesy whenever i want you to but you know I'm telling you, great is your reward. Great is your reward. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for commenting, responding, giving feedback, for watching. I will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Bless you.